Imagine standing in the middle of this huge cemetery. As you look around, what do you see? What do you hear? What do you feel? Rows of tombstones? A sea of names? Dates inscribed long ago? I asked this recently. It's, I heard somebody from the back of the room whisper, I see dead people. <laughs> well, when I see this photo, I see something different. I see thousands of stories never told. I hear wisdom and life lessons never shared. Beneath each tombstone, I feel the stories of loved ones that they never thought were worth sharing. Like the day I showed up at a pre-interview meeting at the home of a 92-year-old whose son wanted me to, uh, hired me to uh, capture his dad's life stories for the family. I knocked on the door. A short man answered the door, very politely introduced himself, and then very quickly told me, I don't know why my son wants me to do this. I'm just a simple country boy from Blanket, Texas. My first question, of course, was, where the hell is Blanket, Texas? <laughs> but this man truly thought that his stories were not important. Yet this man was at... Pearl Harbor on December 7th of 1941. This same guy was on the beaches of Iwo Jima when the flag went up on Mount Suribachi. Think about it. Had his son not thought enough about his dad's stories to record them, they would have been buried with him forever. And more importantly, the lessons from his life would have been buried as well. I started thinking about all this back when I interviewed Holocaust survivors for Steven Spielberg's Survivors of the Shoah Visual History Foundation in the late 1990s. Those thoughts created feelings that have been reinforced hundreds of times since 2006 when I started my business, Life Stories Alive, capturing the living stories of regular moms, dads, grandmas, and grandpas. For over a decade now, I've had those feelings reinforced over and over again. I now know that each and every one of you can have those feelings too. Think about a loved one in your life right now, somebody who's still around. I wished I would have done that back in 1997. On May the 16th of 1997, my grandfather died. If you would have told me at his funeral that within two months, my dad would be gone too, I would have said, you are crazy. And within two months of one another that same year, my dad died too. And at the funeral of both of those men, I watched as slowly but surely their stories were buried with them. Oh, sure, I, I remember some of the stories they used to tell, but forever gone are the sound of their voices, the expression on their faces, as they told those stories, and tragically, the stories that they never told. My guess is that the loved one that you're thinking about right now might have some of those stories too. In keeping with the expression, practice what you preach, I approached the most challenging, yet the most rewarding life story I ever recorded, my own mom's. If you were to look up the word humble in the dictionary, you just might see a sweet photo of my mom. Yep, that's mom holding my granddaughter Lily, her first great-grandchild. Shortly after I started my business, I asked mom if I could record her life stories. She said, no, 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 no. My stories aren't important. <laughs> year after year, mom, let me do your life stories. Nah, my stories aren't important. My stories aren't important. And then mom turned 80 years old. And she said, let's do this. So I was thrilled. You see, when you interview your own mom, you can ask questions you would never ask anybody else. As her chronologically conducted interview progressed, she talked about the birth of her three sons. Then she talked about raising those three boys. And then, well, you know, rather than tell you about it, let me show you how it went down. I think now is the appropriate time to ask this question, and you can be totally honest in your answer, because we all know what the answer is. Which one of your three sons is your favorite? 
I would never, ever. Come, no, we can that. be honest, Mom. We know it's your middle child. Let's hear it. <laughs> For the record. <laughs> Come on, fess up. It's Let's time. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> I never, ever tried to play favorites with any of you. Damn it. I thought Even I would though get I love <laughs> one more than the others. <laughs> oh, listen to this. <laughs> wow. I feel this no. knife in my heart. Yeah. <laughs> no. I've tried to always to, to be fair with all three of you. And you were. We love you, Mommy. What did you learn about my mom in just 60 seconds? Her laugh, her smile, the way she carried herself. What did you miss? by not recording the stories of your parents and grandparents who are no longer with you. Now imagine what you can learn from the stories of the loved one that you're thinking about right now. When I do one of these life stories, I ask hundreds of questions. But don't worry, you don't have to do that. Just start with five. I know most all of you have one of these things, a smartphone. When was the last time you used the voice memos function on your phone? Here's what I want you to do. Very, very important. In the next 24 hours, take out your smartphone, turn on the voice memos function, and with the loved one that you're thinking about right now, ask the following five questions. Question number one. If you had just one more day with a deceased loved one, who would it be and what would you do with him that day? Question number two. What is the most important you le lesson you've learned from a mistake that you've made? Question number three. What are you most grateful for in your life? Question number four. Boxers, briefs, or commando? No, don't ask that. How did that get in there? No, <laughs> let's try that again. Question number four. What or whom are you most proud of and why? And then question number five, is there anything that you've never told me but want to tell me right now? Now imagine standing in the middle of a huge cemetery many years from now. What do you see different? Well, now as you look around, you smile knowing that beneath each tombstone are hundreds of stories captured forever and many generations of families better, safer, and richer because somebody like you thought enough about them to show up and keep a life story alive. Just a few months ago, on March the 5th, my mom died. If you would have told me well, I, you know, I, I always wanted to, but I never, ever thought that I'd be able to speak at her funeral. But I asked my brothers, Ken or Sam, if they wouldn't mind if I did. The night before the funeral, I didn't know what I was going to say. So I sat down at Mom's kitchen table, opened up my laptop computer, clicked to find her video life story, and in her sweet, sweet voice, she told me what to say. You see, the people that we love are going to leave us. But their stories don't have to. That is a choice. And that choice is yours. It starts with just five questions. Begin today to bring your past forward because once it's gone you can never rewind and oh by the way don't tell Ken or Sam but I am 99% sure <laughs> that I was mom's favorite <laughs> thank you <laughs>